says a lot for someone who wasn't speculated to last anywhere from five to six months. Uh, she has lasted now over half of a decade, approaching her sixth year with World Wrestling Entertainment. I remember the first time I saw a Kelly Kelly promo, which aired on ECW on Tuesday nights. I believe she was involved with the inaugural ECW, and she was nothing more than an exhibitionist. And I said to myself, well, this girl's not going to amount to anything. Uh, but something clicked inside of me when it came to Kelly Kelly. Not because, uh, not just because she was one of my first friends that I made on the social networks. At that time, MySpace had really taken over the Internet, and there was no such thing as Facebook's extreme popularity uh, that Facebook has amounted to now. I'm not saying so uh, many positive things about Kelly Kelly because she was one of the first friends that I made on the social networks. I'm saying so many positive things about Kelly Kelly, not only because of the criticism I have received towards my liking of Kelly Kelly and the friendship that we have bonded with over the years, despite our likes and our dislikes, um, but I'm saying it because for some reason I always believed in Kelly's abilities. Now, I didn't know what quite to make of her when I first laid eyes on her uh, from her OVW footage, which is available on YouTube, and the vignettes that she was involved in, and the bikini contest she was involved in, and then when she came from OVW to ECW and changed her name from Barbara Blank, which she was called by her high school friends, and that's how she got the name and acquired the name, Barbie Blank, when she came to WWE and changed it up to Kelly Kelly because superstars can't use their OVW names anymore. Uh, you know, I didn't know what quite to make of the idea that she was an exhibitionist. Maybe it was because uh, she didn't have much of, uh, you know, an interest in the wrestling idea of things uh, when she first started out. There was no talk of her actually being an in-ring competitor, but within a month she was being booked in matches with Shelly Martinez, and that said a lot for someone that WWE didn't have a whole deal of faith in. Vince McMahon and Johnny Ace, John Laurinaitis, the brother of Wolf Bro Warrior Animal, who has been here on the show, uh, spotted her in a catalog and they hired her for looks alone, uh, kind of like what they did with Stacey Keebler and Tori Wilson in the early stages of their career. And the looks are definitely paying dividends because of this phenomenal photo spread that she has available now in Maxim Magazine. Uh, it was said years ago that professional wrestling was not a place for women. When people like Sonny and Sable were around in the WWE and doing their thing, people like Owen Hart would severely criticize women and say the only place for women would be not in a wrestling ring but in a kitchen uh, making meals for professional wrestlers. And I think that the women... Uh, competitive side of things has really heated up since the 90s. I mean, you're talking about uh, 10 or 15 years jumping ahead to the future, and you have a WWE Divas division, which is absolutely unparalleled right now to the uh, Knockouts division. It's far more superior, and women's wrestling has definitely come a long way since the days of Wendy Richter, a WWE Hall of Famer, and the fabulous Mula, who is no longer here with us also, a WWE Hall of Famer, holding the WWE Women's Championship for over 25 years a record that has not been surpassed by anybody. Uh, Michelle McCool will hold the record for being the WWE Divas Champion and Women's Champion on two different occasions, the only women to ever do that in history, despite her leave of absence from WWE going home to spend time with The Undertaker, who she's currently married to right now. Speculation running rampant that The Undertaker is officially retired, and will go to 20-0 at WrestleMania and retire with the streak intact, and that will become what The Undertaker will be known for, the only man in professional wrestling history to go undefeated for over 20 unprecedented years uh, at WrestleMania. That still remains to be seen, uh, but I think that, uh, you know, definitely the professional wrestling uh, industry in terms of women involvement, especially on the independent circuit, if you even want to shed some light on those people, like Alice in Wonderland and December and Jelena, who are wonderful talents, uh, that I've had the opportunity to interview here on this radio program. If you even want to go as far as the independent scene when it comes to women, you have that uh, Shimmer organization, you have Phoenix Wrestling, and you have uh, a number of other phenomenal women's organizations as well, which are paving the way for women who want to be involved in companies like WWE and TNA in the future. I think that professional wrestling in terms of women involvement uh, has really increased over the last 10 or 15 years. I mean, 10 or 15 years ago, the only thing for people like uh, Miss Elizabeth and, and Luna Vachon, uh, despite the few times we had the opportunity to see Luna Vachon do some tag team work with Bam Bam Bigelow in the program with Doink, um, you know, the only thing for women to do was either be a valet uh, for people like the Macho Man Randy Savage and Lex Luger, 
or come out and stretch your stuff basically and promote the fact that uh, professional wrestling was a sex selling sport but now I think that professional wrestling has made that transition from being a sex selling sport into a competitive sport for women and I cannot be more proud to say that and I think that Kelly Kelly definitely is one of those uh, prime examples of an up-and-coming diva who had no fate who was be giving, being given no credit who was set at one point um, by a radio program that she had the mental stability of a two-year-old. Now, I don't necessarily agree uh, with that. And if Kelly Kelly, by chance, is on YouTube.com uploading stuff to her YouTube channel and hears these derogatory comments of her having the mind frame of a two-year-old, I did not say that. That came from another radio show. Uh, Russell's own radio, actually, were the ones that said that. And I think that that's absolutely atrocious. I think that Kelly Kelly is one of these divas that loves to have fun and enjoys what she's doing. And I think that's why uh, different radio show hosts and columnists have documented the fact that it seems on times as if she has the mind of a two-year-old. I remember when WWE were trying to be make her be a ditz. Uh, on the raw side of things, uh, sort of as a replacement for Maria when she was doing that stupidity gimmick and she had left the business. Uh, I think they were trying to get Kelly Kelly to replace her as somewhat of the ditzy type of diva, uh, but it didn't really work out and they very quickly killed that idea, just as they have uh, many of Kelly Kelly's storylines. Examples of that are the Drew McIntyre storyline, which has had nothing done with it uh, since Drew McIntyre and Kelly Kelly were both moved to Raw. I was expecting them to pick up with that. The Kane Kelly Kelly storyline had absolutely nothing done with it, and the Balls Mahoney Kelly Kelly storyline, as much as that was criticized on ECW, at least that was concluded and wrapped up and was probably one of the only storylines that Kelly Kelly has been involved in over the last half a decade that had some of uh, finality to it. Uh, all the other storylines just kind of disappeared off television. I remember the Randy Orton Kane idea, which absolutely flaunted. And then you had uh, the whole idea of Kelly Kelly and uh, Drew McIntyre, where it, it went absolutely nowhere. I think that Drew McIntyre just passed her off and that was it, and there was no reference made of it after. Commentators don't even make acknowledgement of it. Maybe because WWE creative, somewhere along the ride, uh, the ride of things, uh, forgot about it and, and didn't want to do anything else with it and just focused on Kelly Kelly improving her in-ring skills. If you want to talk in terms of improvement, she has the accolade by WWE.com and WWE Magazine of being one of the most improved divas of either 2009 or 2010. I'm not sure what year, uh, but she's definitely one of the most improved. I mean, you're seeing Kelly Kelly, you know, do these flips, these unbelievable flips, and this unbelievable Frankensteiner, which I can never give her enough credit for. Uh, something she didn't have in her move arsenal uh, five or six years ago. All she really did was tackle somebody and pull hair. So I think she has definitely made a very notable transition that I think a lot of radio show hosts and columnists need to make reference of and acknowledgement of. Uh, on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, I was going around posting comments on a number of different videos uh, several months ago, and I made a comment on a Kelly Kelly match, and one of the users on YouTube.com posted a comment, a reply out of my YouTube channel on one of the comments I made on a Kelly video, and he said that you're absolutely right. Uh, HEW Entertainment Variety Radio and HEW Entertainment as a website in whole uh, is absolutely right when we say that Kelly Kelly is not being given near enough credit by radio show hosts and columnists. He absolutely agreed with me uh, 95 to 100 percent about that because I think that a lot of radio show hosts and columnists would rather come on here and criticize uh, Kelly Kelly just to show off and put themselves over more so than spend five or ten minutes putting her over. I mean, I think a better way of doing this, I think a better format for a radio show to have, if you're you're not going to talk in terms of positivity towards the Divas Division or the TNA Knockups Division, which the TNA Knockups Division uh, shouldn't even be classified in this same category because it seems like the shows always put over the TNA Knockouts Division more so than they do the Divas Division. If you're not going to shed some positive light on the Divas Division, you shouldn't talk about it at all. But if you're going to come on your radio show, here's an idea. Why not give Kelly Kelly five or ten minutes of credibility? then destroy and demolish her credibility that she has. I think she has achieved a tremendous amount of credibility despite what she thinks of me because of my columns, my written columns in this corner with Jonathan Clark exclusive through this website or um, the radio show which talks about her in different topics when anything comes up. I think despite what she feels about me and my comments that I make here, I think that she deserves a lot of credit for what she does and I think that uh, more radio shows should spend a great deal of time talking about her and giving her uh, somewhat of a positive outlook for the future instead of always downing everything 
she does. I mean, everything she does, everything she's handed with in terms of WWE creative and the different programs she's had to work, like the Awesome Kong program we're seeing now, uh, the Drew McIntyre idea, the Kane Kelly Kelly storyline, even back as far as the days of ECW and the Extreme Expose idea. No matter what she was handed with, despite the cancellation and disappearance of the storylines and the whereabouts of it being unknown, um, I think she was handed with an idea, she was able to make the programs work, and she deserves a lot of credit for doing that. And I'm going to come on here on my radio show tomorrow, the day after that, the day after that, and the day after that, and a year from now, and still be putting her over because she's one of the most phenomenal female athletes and performers to come through the doors of WWE since the days of Sonny and Sable, who... Uh, are bound to be future Hall of Famers. People like Sable deserve to be in the WWE Hall of Fame, not only because of her athletic ability, uh, but because of her ability to entertain. And Sonny is very deserving of her Hall of Fame induction, which she received back in 2011. I think that um, these things that these divas are doing are absolutely unbelievable. And the fact that these magazines are profiling them the way they are, no matter if it's HFM, Maxim Magazine, Fitness, whatever. Trish Stratus was recently on, a, on an edition of uh, Fitness and Muscle Magazine, and it was absolutely unbelievable. If you saw the photo spread, you know what I'm making acknowledgement of. Um, and I think that any time that a diva has the privilege of being on a cover of Playboy, or being on a cover of HFM, or being on a cover of Maxim, which Kelly is recently on, available on newsstands everywhere right now, cheap plug, kind of like a Mick Foley swerve there, um, I think any time a diva can achieve an accomplishment like that, that is a career highlight that deserves to be on their Wikipedia page uh, that Wikipedia and uh, Online World of Wrestling never makes reference of in their profiles. This is a career highlight that deserves to be made acknowledgement of, and if you're not going to make acknowledgement of it, you shouldn't even talk about it. Uh, it absolutely disgusts me the amount of time that the uh, radio show hosts and the columnists out there devote to these divas. They either devote two minutes to them to say something negative about someone like Kelly, or they don't even talk about them at all. I mean, women's wrestling, you have to agree with me on this, has come a long way in the last 15 years, and if you don't believe me, log on YouTube, and you'll see what I'm talking about. YouTube.com has a variety of different diva footage and matches uh, that is worth checking out, and the improvement of Kelly Kelly is documented by YouTube and Google Video. If you haven't uh, been living under a rock over the last half of a decade, Kelly Kelly has evolved, and I use that word very choosingly on a number of individuals. If I feel they've gone through a period of evolution, I will uh, associate the word evolution with them. I think that she has definitely undergone a tremendous evolution from being an exhibitionist into a phenomenal